afternoon. It's important for the future of our society to make the society more inclusive for every child. You can all here make a huge difference doing that. Today I would like to share my life story with you and inspire you to do so. Over 31 years ago, I was, my birth was a very complicated one. My mother got permanently disabled afterwards. She couldn't walk anymore. She had lots of pains. And through the years, she became more and more depending to a wheelchair. She also lost her job as a high school teacher. Being dependent and having to ask people to help with stupid little things, she said, is the most frustrating thing about my life. But the mother was more than just another client, a patient or some disabled person from our society. She had, many, she had many gifts and talents too. Through the years, she became, to, she became accepting her own disabilities and she came in touch of her own talents. With the help of others and the help of the local activity center for disabled persons, she refound her own gifts and talents. She started visiting museums, she started painting, she even wrote her own life story. The cover of the book is shown here. So she also painted pictures, pictures like this one from Suriname, where she was born. Through the years, she she found out that she had so much gifts and talents. She would, she would like to show the world how beautiful people with disabilities can be as well. And although she died at the age of 50, at the effects of her declining physical condition, she died knowing that she had shown the world how beautiful and gifted people with disabilities can be. At the same time, I was 16 years old. After my mother's death, I was forced, almost forced to live, live in a shelter for kids with special educational needs and special needs and behavioral problems. But one day, there was Coase. Coase knew me through my mother. Coase worked at the local activity center and he owned, together with his wife, a very large house in Leiden. He offered me a room that I could rent. When I was 16, I rented that room I continued my high school and combined it with two jobs on the side. That first year after my mom's, my mom's death and living on my own, I felt depressed. I was terribly lonely, grieving my mother's death. And one day at school, a high school teacher even said to me, Dave, when I look at you, I got sick. Your negative attitude makes me want to throw up. I was devastated, I was shocked, and I decided, decided to get some help, help from a psychologist, but also accept the help of Coase. Living with Coase and the others in the big house really made a difference to me. One day, we went out canoeing. It was my first and also my last time. <laughs> I was quite terrible, terrible at it. I even fell in the water through the day. But that day, relaxing and playing with Coase and the others, that day was one of the most beautiful days of my life. One of the most beautiful days of my life. And through the years, I'm so grateful for the help of Coase and the others. I, at that time, I got my life back on track. I continued my high school and started, started uh, studying at the university. I studied public administration. And I also combined it, kept combining it with two jobs on the side, and as well with voluntary work. When I was 19, I moved to my own apartment in The Hague. There, I also started doing voluntary work with youngsters, with teenagers between 10 and 14 years. Every Friday night, I went out for these guys to guide them with sport activities and simply by playing with them, paying attention to them. So I'm telling them that it's very, very good to perform well at school. One day we went to a theme park with all these kids. <laughs> you, can, you can see a fixture here. And it was a great day, a wonderful day for all of us. Afterwards, 
I graduated from high school, from university, I'm sorry, and I started working as a consultant as I, at, a, at a big consulting firm. A couple of year la years later, I started working at the, uh, in the educational sector, as well here in Venlo. Nowadays, only 15 years after my mom died, I'm chairman of a board, a school board for seven schools for kids with special educational needs. I'm so grateful for being here as a chairman of this board for helping kids who are like my mom. But I'm also worried. A lot of our kids cope with behavioral problems, problems like ADHD, autism, ODD, and so forth. I'm so worried because the way we as adults deal with these kids, as soon as they are a little bit different than most of us, we send them to special schools. And later on, we send them to, we simply we friendly guide them to oversubsidized jobs, or we put them away in daytime activity centers. And I don't think it's the right way to treat these kids. As well, when we look at the numbers, I'm also quite worried. One out of every 20 kids has a mental disorder. Almost 50% of them have a has a behavioral problem. 50%. And how do we treat these kids, like kids with ADHD? We treat them by giving them more drugs and medicines than is good for them. We as a society, as well as you here in this, in this room, we have a choice. Do we keep giving these kids more drugs, like Ritalin? The use of Ritalin to help ADHD and as an, as an antidepressant drug has increased. In the last 10 years, the, number, the use of this drug for helping kids has increased. It's four times higher now. Four times. And we have a choice. Do we continue giving these kids drugs? Or do we choose to be a coach? Do we choose to be a coach? And what does it mean? Choosing for the coast option means being there for your neighborhood kid, being there for a kid in your family, playing with them. Because research shows that playing with kids has a very positive influence on their personal development. Playing with kids, simply playing with them, helps them perform better. These kids are health healthier, happier, more social, and they perform better at schools. This, this is a very, very important thing. Uh, most of the kids with behavioral problems now, nowadays, they are boys, over 70%. And especially boys need to play a lot. And not just that, they also need male role models. Male role models like Coase. Bo men understand boys better than women. Men are more to the point, they, they talk more straightforward, and they accept more of, of boys than women. Boys can do more dangerous things in, in surroundings of men, become more creative, and it's very key for their personal development. I'm sorry if I offended any women here in the room, but it's true. Boys need man, male role models. Well, of course, there are more factors that cause behavior problems with kids, boys and girls. There are biological factors, and of course, there are psychological factors. But let's concentrate today on the social factors that are here in play. Our modern society, society is very difficult for some kids growing up. The modern society asks more of them in social skills and communicative skills. All these incentives for the brains is not suitable for every, every kid. Parents have great difficulty parenting their kids nowadays. And in every layer of society, it's shown that kids have difficulty growing up. Also, our society is more and more becoming a performance-based society. Every kid feels the pressure of thriving through the highest grades. And we as a society give them lots of, lots of pressure, too much pressure. We can make a choice. Let us take three things into consideration. First, let's treat these kids with behavioral problems that are slightly different than the most of us, like humans. 
like persons, not like clients or uh, a number. These kids are simply kids. It's a very important lesson I learned from my late mother. She was disabled, and this is a very important, important uh, lesson. Second, let's end the idea that asking for help is a sign of weakness. I stand here, to, and I have my fair share of help through the way. I couldn't be here doing what I do, being a, a chairman of the school board, without the help of psychologists or help men like Coase. There's nothing to be ashamed of. And third, we are all parents. We can help modern parents parenting their kids. Help your neighborhood kid. Pay attention to them. And together we can make the African saying come true. It takes a village to raise a child. And yes, choosing for this option, choosing for the coast option, taking, taking these three things into consideration means paying attention to your neighborhood kid, your nephew, your brother or sister, sister. And our society will become more inclusive for every kid. This is me and Coase nowadays. I'm a big fan of Coase. He is a modern hero to me. He was there when I was in need of help. And I'm asking you to do the same thing as Coase did. Be there for kids who are disabled or not disabled. We're all people with disabilities, actually. Nobody's perfect, but together we can be more perfect as a whole, more perfect as a society. Use this ball to play with your neighborhood kid. Use this ball tomorrow. And tomorrow, you wake up and you decide to be a coach. Thank you. <laughs>